What's going on YouTube? James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey, June 28th. It's a nice day out here. Figured I'd do a full update, show you how things are coming, show you how we're really moving towards a food forest theme and starting to work our way towards perennials and, and fruit rather than annual vegetables and how this annual vegetable setup is more of a pioneering system towards that towards that perennial system so here's just a few patches we put in this is a this is a patch geared towards moving towards a strawberry the whole strawberry patch but while the strawberry is fruiting this year and while it hasn't sent out its runners and even while it sends out its runners we're going to be getting this uh, vegetable yield of polyculture vegetables we got corn getting big more corn, sunflowers, squash. So squash, we pair with the always pair with corn, some kind of squash because that keeps raccoons from coming at it because the the prickly part of the squash and any cucumbers, things like that, keeps the keeps the raccoons away. So we got tomatoes in here, looking pretty good. There's watermelon in the understory, and all these things are helping provide a nice little shade and help pine out pioneer along our small uh, fruit trees and you can see the strawberries are already starting to put out runners so starting to move in a year or two this patch will just be full of strawberries and this is just providing good nutrients and nitrogen fixing nutrients and providing a nice shade environment for the plants to grow in. It's a great environment for to start young seeds and everything because all these plants around it provide their own climate and their own microclimates and like they uh, provide humidity by pulling up uh, water from deep and everything with their roots so they really just provide microclimates and like the high humidity provides great environments for the strawberries and other kind of plants to grow up in when they're younger. This is uh, one of the bigger tomato plants we have. This is a patch where we have some uh, grapes we got growing up the back wall. We're going to probably attach this white part to the grapes up against that wall. Have grapes growing against the back wall. Then we'll have nitrogen fixing beans in the bottom. And bean, getting that yield of the beans and also fixing nitrogen. There are more polycultures over here. This is just an extra yield. My brother threw it together like a mini hula culture mound up against the, up against the shed. but. He put it in the plastic liner in the back so the water wouldn't eat, eat away at the shed. So that's a pretty thick li liner to the panda film, so the white and the black. Potatoes through here, beans, corn, nice nice pie culture. Coming through to the garden. Garden, we're getting some, uh, see our grape trellises are coming up. We might send a few up there, but we're having better luck sending them off to the sides. And uh, getting some grapes in there. Some of them are getting pretty big. This one's more productive, I think. One against the fence we have is really productive. We have about 10 grape vines now. Some grapes underneath, there they are. And uh, we have a, see here, a cucumber growing up that same trellis through the back, doubling that yield. Got a lot of big broccolis coming up. These are, if you guys want to look back, this is like where I used to start the, gar the films. This is where we had the, the little frame set up and we started everything early. And, I mean, it's worked great. We've provided these small little edge gardens everywhere, all different polycultures, getting yields out of all of them. It's been nice. I can even pull, like, a carrot or something. Show you guys. I haven't pulled many carrots from over here. I've been pulling them from the back more. Just getting some nice ones in the back, but... These ones have been in long enough to be a little something. Yeah, still this one's still a little small. I've been pulling some big ones from the back. Borage doing great. These polycolors are really doing great. Um, I was really pleased how the broccolis have just uh, canopied out over other things and just taken over as the canopy layer. And then other things have thrown through like the mustard greens and stuff but we're getting some broccoli broccoli here we got a nice broccoli in the back these are all corns broccoli head back here but see it right there 
I said this is uh, this was this is supposed to be a video about like succession towards uh, food for us. So we got more fruit trees in. This is an apple tree. We got ten dollars at Lowe's. Golden Delicious. Another tree over there. Uh, not sure what kind. I can check it out. Three trees down here. So we've got another tree over here. Red Delicious apple. So there's two trees in this little front. We've got the strawberries in the ground as the other perennial. Grapes over here. Grapes in the front. Another perennial coming through. While we're getting all these yields of the of the annual plants, here we got some strawberries. Missed those, but this is going to start moving throughout the garden. Eventually, everything will be strawberries. Nice, very dense pie culture in here. Plants fighting for their life, doing great. Uh, the five grafted apple tree is our pear tree that we've had in the back. It's producing an immense amount of pears. Here's another new apple tree we got, yellow delicious. So, four or five apple trees right in here. The trees. Here's a, here's a giant bee. This is like a weird one. Never seen that guy. But, uh, this is cherry bing cherry. This is a cherry tree. Hopefully it should do good. Next year, another perennial, blueberries. We're going to be getting more of those, those are doing great. This little tomato patch, Edge Garden is doing great. We've got the marigolds, some of them are starting to flower. Tomatoes are flowering, carrots are doing good, more marigolds flowering. Some tomatoes under here are getting a little fat. So we should be getting some tomatoes in this edge soon. <clears throat> I really love the calendulas, I mean, I think they help to draw in plants. If the plants love to, to get their honey and everything from the borage, that's their favorite, I think, but... The calendula is just great for drawing them in. It looks like a giant sun. So that's another perennial. This is a tomato patch we got going. Doing well. Planted along the edges a lot. This kind of tree is, uh, is another kind of tree. It's plum. Center roses inside my dwarf plum. <clears throat> so, this year we haven't got too many too many fruit yields yet, but in the next coming years we should really, really be getting some good fruit yields is what we're looking for. Comfrey right here, been a little bing cherry for chop and drop. Here's a, another cherry, different kind of cherry. So, we got about ten, and we got a fig in the middle, about nine or ten, more kind of adult or teenage trees and we've got plenty of apple seedlings growing and trees like that here's a fig tree and now some figs so this is going heading towards a a uh, perennial system I wonder if we're getting some squash down there soon probably big corns over there so this is really going towards perennial we're moving into succession towards a perennial we came through and replanted <clears throat> replanted all in here about a day or two ago, so that should be coming up underneath the cherry tree, I mean underneath the apple tree and stuff. And then we planted over through here. Came through anywhere we didn't see nice growth. We came through and replanted. So we're always replanting. We planted back there and also back there. We have more things coming up. We have a lot of things going to seed and stuff. Some of our zucchinis are getting big. Some flowers, some of them are just huge. This one is just massive. Um, it's like as tall as me almost. And I'm, over six foot. You can see we got beans growing up it. Hold it on in there. It's a nice little polyculture. Some of these potatoes already we've been eating some of them. They're great. They're getting huge already. This thing is just flowering like crazy. Looks like you got some yellow zucchinis on it already. So cooking neck squash. Whoop. It's one of the hard things to walk, to find places to walk, but I love that. I love doing it like that. Nice and dense. Big corns bunch of cucumbers growing up this edge garden. This is, edge garden is just a great polyculture mixture. And, uh, everything is really supporting itself and doing well. Beans growing up the side along with cucumbers with just so many flowers on them. More corn back there. Cucumbers trailing out the front. It looks like a nice little mini forest. The calendulas back there to bring in some pollinators. So 
we have a lot of bees in here. We're getting as many bees as possible. It only makes sense. The more pollinators you get, the more uh, the more fruit you get. Some of the corn back there is getting big. We had a giant pumpkin that was getting pretty big, but unfortunately uh, got stepped on, so we had to cut it. So we're hoping it comes back a little bit, but it was doing pretty well. Here's that back little culture bed. You can't even tell it's a mound or it was a mound or anything. And it's got it's got that living room kind of effect that we were looking for. You walk in to the left, I mean, you got a giant sunflower, some big broccolis. This one here is starting to head up back there. There's food everywhere, parsley's flat. Some of the turnips are just huge. Lettuce flowering. Uh, radish is flowering. Here's some California poppy. Most, such a beautiful flower. Corn's getting big. Corn's getting big back there. Here's the giant pumpkin. Still doing alright. Hopefully it comes back. Some beans back here. This is nice, nice thick bush of beans. Grab a couple. Ah, the ground's hot. Got no shoes on. Yeah. There's plenty of beans now. On all plants. The more you pick, the more beans you get, so. That's what I love about beans. And they're nitrogen fixers. The, the beans and peas are like the best plants ever, I think. I mean, they're all the best, but can never, never have too many beans and peas. Worst thing you're doing is feeding nitrogen to your soil, giving back, you know. I mean, you're giving to yourself, you're giving back. Plants like that, it just, those are the money plants to me. Some corn growing up, it looks like we put a little a little rye or something. If someone wants to try to identify that, a couple little pieces of rye or something, or wheat. Culture with cucumbers and stuff. Is that back who holds her now? We're going. We're going through and putting the wood chips on the ground. The paths and everything. Not the planting though. Tomatoes, dense polycultures, sunflowers, cucumbers are just throwing. It pops out everywhere. Tomatoes, calendula, beans. Tomatoes. This is just a summer polyculture. You can see how big some of the uh, cantaloupe is getting. I mean, compared to maybe some of the beans. <laughs> the leaves are huge. It's getting big. So that should be producing some good fruit for us, hopefully. It's all producing food. That's the thing. Everything in here has got a purpose. A lot of them serve the purpose of us, but they got purposes, and here's some flowers in this hoo culture mound, the tomatoes. This is one of our, my, one of, like my style of production, tomatoes, kind of. I always like to plant plants through it. And I like the, how they support, provide shade, and that whole kind of spilling the space and everything, so. I think that's important. Here's a potato patch in the back. So. You can see we're producing a very lot of food, and the thing about how we're producing this food is that the amount of calories we're putting into, the amount of calories we put in work-wise to get these harvests is so minimal. We don't do weeding or anything. And all we did was kind of just put some of the soil down, or put some mulch or something down, and then plant seed, you know. We put wood chips down, but we ended up kind of just taking those off in a lot of spots, because we're doing better with the living mulch. And some of these, the polycultures we created, they've gone to a forest system in a sense. You've got the canopy up top, sub canopy. Canopy is these borage. Bees just sit here all day and, and work on them. There's two on it right now. Three. And the sub canopy is like the broccoli. Herbaceous down low, you got like the uh, kale. Some of the kale is busting through, but you can just see, I mean, it's it's already self, the plants are self mulching. There's there's a spider web down there just catching mulch and catching everything, and 
everything's just self mulching itself, so it's fertilizing itself already. And the stuff on the bottom is dying off, so it can give put all of its auxins and all of its hormones and all of its life to the things up top and to the flowers. So we've got a self mulching system that's living mulch. So that's that's what we were trying to mimic and create. And then between that, we'll do some productive edges probably in the future. That's kind of what we did over there. So we're we're trying to get the best yield and yield in terms of taking taking account the uh, natural landscape, the environment, not putting any harm on that, feeding back to the soil, and and not putting too many calories in that. That our yield is pretty pretty much pointless. So most of this is is yield for for the amount of calories we're putting in. And a lot of the work is done because a lot of the stuff is all going to seed, and, and a lot, a decent amount will just let fall and let self seed itself. So we've already collected some seed from things like the mustard greens. As you can see, this is done. There's some seed right here. So that's fresh seed from our own garden. So we can even just drop it like that. You know, at one point that's going to come up, maybe not now, maybe not this year, maybe in a year or two, but it's not going to go bad for a while. So, this is this is our, this is our uh, pioneering system towards a perennial system, so thanks for following along. If you watch the whole thing, feel free to give your comments, advice. We're still learning, but we're having a lot of fun, and thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying and feel free to comment, give your give your advice, give your give your word and let us know what you think. Thanks for tuning in guys. James Pergini is out.